morning everybody good morning welcome to business garage god is here I invite us to get up on our feet and let us worship the king of kings and the lord of lords Ooh, yeah. hallelujah
scripture says that if any man be in Christ Jesus, he's a new creation. The old is gone and the new is come. We have a new identity. Yeah. See, I have a new identity. I have a new identity. See, I have a new identity. praises 
to your name and this morning we join the whole earth and all of creation to sing praises to our God and our King. Can you worship him one more time with a shout of praise wherever you are. Welcome to Business Garage. Would you turn to your neighbor and help welcome them if you're here in the room. If you're at home, I don't know if you have a neighbor, but you can welcome them. Those online, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Please be seated right here in the studio. And did you know that you can be part of our live audience for Business Garage every Sunday? Oh yes, if you're here by 7.20 a.m., you get to join in and to, what is it called? Network. Yeah, you network and get to hang out with other business leaders. But welcome once again for those of you joining us for the very first time. Do we have first time guests in the house and online? Let us know. You're our VVIPs. Just put your hand up if you're in the room and it's your first time to be with us here at Business Garage. Hey! First time guests, you are especially welcome. If you're online, we also would like to extend a warm welcome. And my name is B3. I am hosting them, the real people who are coming on later with the interview today. We are still delving into oil and gas, but I'd like to tell you a little bit about Worship Harvest. We are a movement of the gospel, discipleship, and mission. And we are here for the sole purpose of catalyzing spiritual, social, and economic renewal in our immediate communities. And as a result, the world yes we believe and we practice the truth the church begins on monday and sunday is garage time beep, beep. so that's why we come together on sunday for oil change servicing and then monday to sunday we are out there representing god even in the economy and that's why you see something like business garage here we believe that god has us out there as the church actively representing him everywhere we are and so right now, I want to give you an opportunity. We've worshipped with song and we're going to continue. But I'd like us to worship God with our treasure, our gift. Every time you bring an offering into the house of God, even when you're away from the house itself, you're declaring God is in this place and I'm expecting to encounter him. That's what your offering says. Because every time you go to meet a great person, you carry a gift. So when we go to meet God in his house, we carry a gift. And so we're going to do just that. For our online audience, you can give through mobile money. MTN, the number is 0778-618-418. And Airtel, that is 0758-618-418. If you're giving through mobile Momo Pay or, or, or Airtel Pay, MTN Momo Pay is 148722. And our Airtel Pay is 1160032. Of course, you can give through our website, worshipharvest.org forward slash give. And if you're writing a check, write it in the names of Worship Harvest Ministries. We continue our worship together and the worship team will come and help us worship as we give our offering.
one touch every burden fell off my shoulders with just one touch every mountain swept away now goodbye guilt and shame he's overcome the grave we'll lift the name of jesus Business Leaders Breakfast Series. You don't end up with the winning team by accident. You don't wake up one day, you get to office and you witness something like that. You either train them or trade them. Marketing is simply a process of exchange of value. Increase the number of clients, think about making zero profit on the first transaction and then look through the lifetime value of the client figure out the product side of your service if you are going to scale how do you ensure that your supply chain is legit using science and technology don't remain in archaic ways of doing business articulate the vision if i as a leader do not have clarity about where I want us to go, I will fail to build a good winning team. The moment you get that team wrong, you will fall. And many companies have been built, but because they changed the leadership, they got maybe level three leaders instead of getting the level five leaders. There's only so far that they would go. My takeaway is, what am I going to do to? multiply myself at least three times where i am right now systems are a thing that is forced upon you once you embrace the vision we've been coming as a team give or take four to five people every other time um we have definitely learned a lot uh, from teamwork to uh, profitability to systems so i have been so challenged to think big to grow big uh, for my company and also to think about my product and how I can be very innovative so that it can stay on the market. But I look forward to 
the next season, these business breakfasts, where each one of us will have real growth. Yeah. Thrive, the business leaders breakfast series. Good morning, Business Garage. Let me hear some noise in the room. Welcome to Business Garage again this Sunday. It's a great privilege and honor to be here today. Uh, as you are aware that we are here to equip people with prince, biblical principles of how to manage their businesses because business is good and God loves you to do your business and wants you to do it well because business people solve problems. So welcome to Business Garage. I want to encourage you to share the link. Uh, if you're in the room, if you're at home, share the link uh, to your friends, family, business partners, and everyone you know there because today we're going to hear some amazing things that are happening in the sector of oil and gas. As you are aware, this month, we are uh, learning what's happening in the oil and gas sector in Uganda. And today, we're going to hear another or the first business we are featuring in this season uh, of oil and gas. And they're going to tell us what they are doing. So I want you to welcome with me Isabella Biarohanga from City Medicals. Isabella, you're very, very welcome. Thank so, you so much. Yeah. We are learning what's happening in the oil and gas. I know you're doing some business there. But... Uh, the government of Uganda and Uganda as a nation don't have capacity to drill and refine and trade the oil that we have. So we outsourced uh, what they call international oil companies to come and do that for us. But when they do that, they are going to, we have to pay them. But the money we pay them, they have to, we have to make sure that a lot of that stays here in the country. Last week we heard from Petroleum Authority of Uganda who said they want to retain at least 40% in the next five years. Uh, the, 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 in, the, in the, the, the session, rather the, the period where they are going to set up facilities that are going to be able to drill and, and, and transport the oil. So you are one of the people who we hope can help us retain that value in this country. And we're very proud that you're a Ugandan business that has been in this sector for a while. And you're here to help us learn what is happening there. What can we do as small businesses? What can we do in Obo to engage, in order to engage uh, the sector? So Isabella, you're welcome. First, tell us who you are. Introduce yourself. People out there are expectant. They want to know who is Isabella. First, forget City Medicals, but who is Isabella? How did you start the business and what problems do you solve exactly? Thank you so much. Um, I'm here for the first time and I'm really in awe <laughs> of what I'm seeing here. It's amazing. And I think you're really doing a great job. So my name is Isabella Birunji Biarugaba, and uh, I'm a mother of three uh, very beautiful children, two daughters and a son. Uh, I'm married to Dr. Huntington Biarugaba, and as it may be, we actually do business together. Yeah, let's <laughs> celebrate family so, business. Yes, yes. yes. So uh, we've been uh, in business working together for about maybe 12 or 13 years. 12 years? Yes. Running a family business. Sitting next to each other, back to Every back. Every day? Yeah, you can imagine. Are we going to celebrate uh, this <laughs> lady here or not? <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. So um, I'm a co-founder of uh, City Medicals and City Ambulance. They are two separate companies. Okay. And um, of course, the founder is uh, Dr. Huntington, but we did start first of the all, business. I forgot together. to tell you that yes. here, the first thing you do is send greetings. Oh, yes. So send greetings to I don't know who, yes, but yes, there you yes. go. Definitely, I would love to send greetings to my huge extended family. I have lots of sisters and brothers. But I will also want to extend my greetings to the people that I work with. Shout out to the teams at uh, City Medicals and City Ambulance. We are such a huge team. Um, and of course, to the people that love us, work with us, you know. Yes, it's, it's, it's good to have you in our lives. Yeah. Thank you. Continue. You are telling us your story, who yes. you are, and probably... The, the beginnings of city medicals and what problems you solve. 
So um, City Medicals is actually the first company. It is, let's say, the parent company. And um, ideally, when City Medicals started in 2011, um, it was a very small, one-roomed business clinic somewhere in Wandegea. And uh, it's been a long journey all the way through to Acacia. But as it is now, we have three branches. We have uh, the head office uh, in, at Acacia in Kololo that mainly does outpatient services, a lot of um, employment medical screening for clients in the oil and gas. We do COVID testing. Uh, we have two other branches, a hospital in Hoima uh, that does an extensive uh, range of services from maternity, inpatient, outpatient, radiology services, um, yes. And then, of course, now uh, a facility in Bulisa that is in the heart of the oil and gas. And we do literally almost the same things. Um, City Ambulance, on the other hand, is an emergency medical service provider that looks at uh, all emergency medical services mainly. Uh, response, rescue, uh, we look at, um, you know, uh, on-site and remote site medical clinics, uh, meaning that we set up clinics in remote settings, especially where oil and gas is. Um, then, of course, we provide the personnel that are working on those sites, from the doctors, the nurses, the paramedics, uh, lab technicians, if required, radiologists, yes, and all that. So just right there, you're talking about all these services. How many people do you employ? Currently, we employ about 144 personnel. 144. Yeah. Guys, let's celebrate. I mean, employing five people alone is a headache. 144 people in your, and these are doctors, yes. nurses, lab technicians, ETC, and these are professionals. Yes, professional You're people. You're doing a great yeah. job. Mm. You're doing a great job. Yeah. All right, so tell us, how did you begin? What, of course, I know now doctor is a doctor, yeah. but you could have chosen another journey, and you started together. What, how were the beginnings like? I know you told us you were in a one-room uh, uh, office in one day. Yeah? How has it been to this stage? Briefly, then we can go into the oil and gas sector. Uh, it's not been an easy job. I don't know if you've... Um, if you've moved out of home, you can imagine the feeling. You leave uh, your home, everything is being provided, and then when you move out, it dawns on you, you need your own space, you need to buy your own stuff, you need to buy, you know, to literally set up and, you know, get functional. It's the same thing, we were both employed. Um, I was working with the Ministry of Finance at the time. Uh, my husband was working also for the Ministry of Health and also doing some side hustles, you know, real side gigs. But um, when we decided to start, we figured we needed space, so we moved out and uh, we started a small um, clinic. Um, at the time, it wasn't even called City Medicals. We were just out to start. It was called, you know, it, the name was Under Wraps. <laughs> But we had to start and do something. So we would go to work and then leave work and actually come to work again. So when we would leave work, we would start at five. Uh, my husband does, we were not married at the time. So uh, he would see the patients. I do the books, you know, I pick the money, look at the receipts, organize cash for banking the next day, you know put the money in my bag, at the end of the day, at around eight, we say, let's go, we close. You know, so he was um, literally the one who would dispense the drugs, see the clients, give the injection. He was the man with the key. Uh -huh. And then I would do everything else, receive them, pick the cash, you know? Uh, you know it was basically the two of us and maybe somebody else who was assisting, yeah. So, but with time, as the clientele grew, then we realized the need to actually move. And uh, from Wandegea, we moved to Bukoto. And uh, in Bukoto, that's when we really saw the birth of a really um, something that was beyond us. 
we stayed there for about maybe uh, 10 years, about, yeah, about 10 years. And uh, that's when many of the opportunities began to come in. It was a lot of hard work, consistency, you know, and uh, yeah. And of course, recently when we moved to Kololo, because we needed bigger space, which is now beginning to be small, but again, it is- I see you're coming yeah. through, from the valley, one day Gea, Bukoto, now to Kololo. Yes. That's good <laughs> progress. Yeah? Yeah. Now tell us, how did you enter the oil and gas sector? And what, what exactly are you doing? Because you're not doing all the services there, but what are you doing exactly there? Why and how did you enter that sector? Because we want to encourage people that it's possible to penetrate into the sector and do some good work. Yeah. Um, I think there is a myth that um, oil and gas is difficult. But uh, if you look at our journey, actually, it was a learning experience. Because um, through now, with City Medicals, we started seeing a few clients that were presenting from the oil and gas. At the time, we didn't know what it was. We had this thing, there's oil, you know, in Hoima and all that. And we were wondering, what is this? So we were looking for business one day. And uh, somebody said, I need someone who can do medical screening for my people. And they are going to Hoima. And we said, where are they going to Hoima? To do what? Like, what is actually in Hoima? And so we got the business. These people came in. We screened them and they left and we asked, so when are they coming back? And this person told us it's an annual medical checkup. And we said, you mean the business ends here? <laughs> and so we thought, no, 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 no. Oil and gas can't be this brief. Otherwise the hype is just too much. So originally the idea was that we just go out, market and see as many people who can have, you know, their medicals done with us. And then Along the way, we figured, let's just take a drive to Hoima and really investigate for ourselves. And so uh, around 20, I think 2014, my husband and I got into a car and for the first time we ventured to Hoima. So we wanted to see what is this town about? Does it even exist? Do they even have power? Is the oil there? <laughs> is the oil really or there? Or they sold it already? Or it is already gone. Yeah. Mm. And uh, that's how we actually started. We got to Hoima, tried to learn a bit more, and that's how we actually started uh, City Ambulance. So we realized the distance was so long, and uh, people were having issues actually coming all the way to, to town. And we already had the idea for City Ambulance, but City Ambulance was mainly doing uh, rescue services. Um, if you had an accident or were doing uh, patient transfers from one hospital to the other. But entering the oil and gas, then we realized that we could actually use City Ambulance to do more than just what we thought. We could actually have a real emergency medical evacuation plan for all the clients that are working there and be able to transport their patients or casualties from the field to either Hoima or from the field to Kampala or be able to resuscitate them on site. Yeah. Just to give an insight, these people are living in the bush. Yeah, yeah, ideally. yeah. yeah. So it's hard for them to access any medical facility. Someone has to yes. take the services to them. Exactly. Okay. Yes. So tell us, I know as we were speaking earlier, you told us your mind just, you had to learn, you had to grow. Yes. How, was, how was that? What, what, what changed in your thinking as a business person? Well, um, oil and gas has a certain level of standard. And uh, for us, we are used to doing business, um, you know, our Juwakali way day to day we miss out on a lot of that standard. So when we entered the oil and gas, the first time they told us, okay, it's all right, you bring your ambulance. And then they said, but before you bring it, we need to have one, a mechanical check, and two, a medical inspection check. And so when they opened, we were in awe of what they were actually looking for. They were looking for the spanner, the, you know, they were looking at the tires, looking for the jack, looking, you know, the pressure, 
looking for the manufacturers uh, recommendations seat the belts. steering wheel the seat belts mm. when it was last serviced and we quickly learned that we now have to figure out a way of presenting this information and now that's where the struggle began how do i keep this information how do i present it they don't want to see the last service tag only they want to see for the last one year that you have had this vehicle where are the service tags and, we and why is that important maybe share a bit yeah of course um because i have my car why yes. can't i go where i want yeah but uh, you see health and safety is very important and in oil and gas health and safety is the number one requirement so if you cannot confirm beyond reasonable doubt that the service you're offering is good of course to the client but it must be safe okay so um, yes it is important to make sure that everything that you have provided has some sort of certification and has that level of standard that they are looking for yeah so you as a business person i know you earlier also told me you quickly had to find ways of improving in new vehicles uh learning more about the sector and the standards uh and finding partners tell us about that your weaknesses and then how do you plug those weaknesses because i might have my car shop doing something or my business offering a certain service but i cannot meet the standard what are my options they raising the standard which can make be costly or not depending on where you are but also the aspect of finding a partner to work with um of course um part of growth is definitely identifying your weaknesses and uh, if you're to work in the oil and gas you have to first of all look for skilling and training there are so many opportunities for skilling and training i don't know if you've heard of the stand big incubator programs um, there are lots of programs organized by, for example, GIZ to help people really uh, train in all the required uh, standards, yeah. But most importantly, um, the issue of uh, making sure that you transfer that skill to yourself and be able to actually grow is something else. But also there are certain issues that you may not be able to fix just by skilling and training. So when you have your certification, you have all these things, the opportunity presents, you have a certain scope that you can cover, and then you realize there's a certain scope that you can't cover. So that's where partnering comes in, um, having joint venture partners, uh, being able to look at people who can work with you to actually execute uh, certain scope. Yeah. So as city ambulance and city medicals, of course, we are always out to look for uh, joint ventures. We partner with some uh, international companies that help us to really improve the quality, improve the standard, and be able to service our clients. Thanks, Isabel. And if you don't mind, and I'm, 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 I want to encourage you to ask questions, ask lots of questions, because we have an opportunity here because of your experience. If you don't mind, just share with us like e examples. In your case, you're doing medical services. What have you outsourced? Or what have you subcontracted? Because uh, talk about those two, the higher end where you feel like you cannot work, but you get a partner, but also the, the people who you've subcontracted to do some other smaller works you can do, but you want to give out their services. I know someone in the house who you've given a certain part of your contract. So just share some of those so people see the upside of it and also the downside of being able to work with other people. Um, of course, um, imagine doing uh, emergency medical response and you do not have aircrafts. Okay? So part of uh, what we have actually uh, partnered for or subcontracted for is somebody to help us with our, our aeromedical, you know, evacuations, what we call medical air evacuations. So uh, this partner actually meets us halfway. If we are going to do road evacuations, then we do it by ourselves. But we must, if we must do uh, air evacuations, then we call in on a partner. We work together, we provide personnel, we provide equipment and all that, and then they come in to help us do the job. But most importantly, if we must do international um, evacuations or escort services, so those 
course, we would actually look out to an international partner, yes, to support us. Yeah. So I, I remember what uh, Petroleum Authority mentioned to us last week, that because of the fact that they want to retain value here, uh, the international companies are mandated to work with businesses like you, as long as you're local, if you work with other bigger companies, such so that that value can be retained here. Have you got any support from Petroleum? Because they're here, they just look, they're here to help you. Have you had any support from Petroleum Authority? And if someone wants that support, how, does, how do we go about it? I think um, the best thing that has happened to the oil and gas sector is actually having the Petroleum Authority of Uganda. I'm telling you, they're like our backbone. And uh, I think that is the difference between the oil and gas sector currently in Uganda and so many other countries, and maybe even other sectors. Uh, because here they have really stressed the importance of national or local content, and uh, they are pushing it through uh, profit sharing in terms of the contract value. They are looking at it in terms of employment of personnel, local personnel, as long as the skill is available in, in the country, then they want the local partners to actually be able to provide it. And they have gazetted certain um, activities to actually local providers. So I think the support is enormous. And uh, as and when you feel overwhelmed, you're trying to get this partner on board, but you're feeling, you know, you, you just can't do it, they are always the best people to approach. And they will let you know how you can actually do it, what you should look out for. And um, I think for everyone who is looking for such kind of partnerships or joint ventures, should uh, once in a while actually be able to consult and get advice from them, yeah. Mm. And in that light, they told us there are all these conferences they organize. Uh, earlier, you still mentioned to me about exposing yourself by attending these conferences. How has that been for you? Uh, is it valuable? You also mentioned that you got some of your partners in those conferences. Tell us about that. Um, of course, um, that's where it comes to now. First of all, identifying the opportunities, but also building the networks. So you're going to build the networks if you're staying your business and doing your own thing day to day. You must be able to go out, look for the people, possible partners, and identify the opportunities. Um, so most of these uh, suppliers organize supplier conferences. For example, there has been um, a French suppliers fora. Uh, PAU also organizes quite a lot of uh, uh, conferences. The Uganda Chamber of Mines and Kama also organizes, uh, private sector foundation. So in most of these meetings, they usually call together many providers for different sectors, agriculture, health, uh, engineering and construction, and all those. So in those meetings, you actually realize that you can actually meet so many people, you network with them, find out the relevance of your business to them because just because you're in agriculture doesn't mean as a medical provider you know yeah so when you're there you even if it's an agricultural conference you go there look for businesses there are people who have huge farms and actually need medical services there are people into construction so you go out and see people it's a marketing platform but at the same time, it, uh, it's a platform to create networks, identify opportunities that could also, you know, add value to your own business. Yeah. Thank you so much, Isabella. Uh, still, I want to encourage you to ask questions. What I hear you say is that we need to go out and seek the opportunities, find knowledge in those spaces. We can't wait for government to bring us whatever. We can't wait for a friend to bring us a deal. Go out there as a business person. One of your core activities is to seek for opportunities. You go out there and look for those opportunities. Now, let's come back internal a bit. The people. Most of the, uh, I know most of the people talk about their staff having to change and do things differently. All the trainings you're supposed to have every, I don't know, week or whatever, you stated, you do a lot of training. How has that been for them? Because one of the core things that we find that the sector probably is equipping people in things they've not learned before and doing things differently. How has that journey been for your staff and the way you're managing them and leading them? Of course, um, 
mindset change is something completely different. Uh, because we had to move from an era where we were doing things as we thought to actually do things following a certain standard. So that requires a lot of consistent uh, training, mentoring, uh, bringing some advisors on board, restructuring of the company, opening up new positions uh, for people to actually, you know, take lead. And uh, for us, it is a journey. It is really a journey. And uh, when we started, I think we had about maybe 28 or so employees. So by the time we get to uh, over 140 employees, there is a lot of uh, intentional uh, training for the personnel. So we do uh, consistent needs assessment to find out where the gaps are. And then with the appraisals, we know what needs to actually uh, be added or improved. We have a training plan and therefore we follow that throughout the year on who needs to be trained where and how. But then also just opening up to the fact that some skills we need to learn, okay? And we imagine, yes, these professionals have gone to school, but we must add some professional trainings to them as well. And we have a standard, some are annual, some are, you know, uh, every two years. Um, but we also have some staff that are really not say professional, but um, skilled. For example, the drivers or semi-skilled, yes, for example, the drivers. Um, so those as well also need their own level of training. And it is important that they actually, you know, get it and feel part of the improvement uh, journey and process. Yeah. Interestingly, drivers are one of those people who are required to be so skilled in the oil and gas. Uh, because of accidents. There is no need, they should have zero accidents. And that can bring all sorts of problems to the businesses of the international companies. Now, someone is asking a question, which uh, I hope to ask, but good someone has asked it. What did it take to be, this is from Dr. Stephen Mugabe, what did it take to be ISO certified? What did it take to be ISO certified? So, um, just to confirm, the, the need to be certified was actually generated through a training that we had, okay? So I don't know if there are people who have uh, attended the uh, Stanbic Incubator Program. Those who have attended, you know, <laughs> yes, they prompt you to think and think, really. And you know, uh, to operate in the oil and gas, you have to be registered on the National Supplier Database. Uh, but you need all the legal requirements to actually be registered on the NSD. Now, as you go through the legal requirements, then you also notice that ten requirements you must so there are certain requirements that you must have if you also want to enjoy partnerships. And as a result, so as a result, we figured that we might. We realized that we must start on the journey for certification. It has been a long and painful journey. Um, I will tell you. I don't know if I would like someone to enter my house and talk to me and tell me the way you're cleaning, the way you lay your bed, I think the, the cooking, the way you orient your house health, the position of your bed, I think the curtain, the lighting, it is uh, that kind of situation. So when you're undergoing uh, ISO certification, you literally open up and say, this is how I manage my business. These are the standard operating procedures that I follow. And then someone will come in and say, I want you to show me how you manage your finances. Okay? How do you manage your HR? How do you do your recruitment? Let me have a look at your contracts. I want to see the standard operating procedure for the lab. 
uh, who are these personnel working in the lab? When did you train them? What is the bare minimum qualification? Um, the technical requirement for the ambulances, where are your checklists? Where do you purchase them from? How do you even decide on what ambulance you require? So it took us over a year to actually get certified because um, they had to come in, train us first of all on what it means to have a standard to get certified, what is required, the documentation required, the record keeping and all that. And um, I, I remember my personnel saying, ah, do you think really to Malako? And, and I was telling them we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. We are going to, uh, you know, our purpose is really to be a regional but also international company at some point in time. And therefore we must take on these uh, recommendations and certification. But I'm proud that after a year, we actually got the certification and uh, it was, uh, you know, yeah, a very fulfilling know, process. Clap. Yeah. Just clap, just clap, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Great, so your certification is in what, what, what uh, standards? Uh, so we have uh, quality. Quality, we make sure you offer a good service. Yes, okay. yes. We also have the health, okay. and then we also have environment. environment. Yes, okay. yeah. Because one last, last week, uh, someone was asking, how do you protect the environment? So mm. when you do that certification, mm. it ensures that the people working there and the companies protect the environment because it was a very key question yes. in the last last week. Of course, um, with medical services, of course, the environment is really key mm. because we are looking at waste management, for example, how do we manage our waste? Mm. Where do we dispose it of? How do we do segregation? Things of the like, yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. Awesome. Uh, there are two questions that are similar. Stephen and Tracy K. Stephen is asking, how did you find the companies that you supply medical services. But then Tracy is asking, what made you stand out for you to get an opportunity to work hand in hand with oil and gas? Because I believe they did, they did just choose, a, they didn't just choose at random, maybe that's what she's saying. So how did you get into those spaces? How exactly do, do you get to a point where they say, we are giving you the work? Uh, of course, they are bidding processes, mm. okay? They are usually they advertise either in the in the papers, but of course you you start small. You you provide services for some of the subcontractors, and you build up uh, slowly by slowly before you get to the real uh, table. But the best thing, like I said, is always to just be a part of all the activities that they are you know they are organizing. Part of the sub player for us, where you meet real clients who are working in the field, and then of course you must bid, you must bid. Tell us about the bidding. The bidding is as crazy as it gets, and um, of course I was talking about um, understanding your scope and figuring out when you can't do it on your own and when you need to work with uh, somebody else. And uh, I think as Ugandan companies, we possess a lot of potential if we work together. Yes. Um, there is a, a feeling that it's my thing and I must do it by myself. But, um, you know, people bring different strengths. And many times if you approach a bid independently, you may not be able to tick off all the boxes and requirements and have the level of experience that is being looked for. So yes, the bidding is rigorous. Uh, you must have so many requirements. Like I said, you know, it is technical, it is uh, commercial. Mm. Uh, you're looking at the HSE components and all that, yeah. Okay. All right, mm. so Martha Kauda has two questions. One, which I think you, ha you answered a bit. You could probably extend it and, and give some more detail. What ISO certification have you obtained and for purposes of our understanding, what is ISO certification? And then another question, in terms of cost, how much was the ISO certification on your part? So what kind of, uh, what, the, what ISO certification did you obtain, you've told us, but then for what, for the purpose of the understanding, what is ISO certification anyway? Because they're saying ISO, what is it? What's the importance of ISO certification? So um, ISO uh, 
for lack of a better word, is an international standard um, that is required for companies um, at a certain level of uh, operation. And ultimately, what they are looking for is just the standard in the operating procedures for all the different uh, scopes of work that you're doing. And for that to happen, they follow a certain level of record keeping, of documentation, of policy um, within the area, uh, the personnel. So when you're looking for international certification, you're looking at definitely the scope that you're carrying out and justifying how best you can you know, efficiently provide that service following that uh, standard operating procedure, yes. Basically, I want to confirm that if you're certified in this service, mm. uh, they can trust you with their... Yes, business. that you're following the ultimate international, international standard or requirement yeah. to actually execute that exactly. scope. Okay, yes. awesome. Yeah. Richard Kwasa is asking, what key areas would you advise any business which desires to grow to closely pay attention to? What key areas would you advise any business which desires to grow mm. to closely pay attention to? And that could be in or outside the oil and gas sector. Um, I think, of course, the most important thing um, to growth is identifying what your need is, okay? And uh, identifying what the, the skill you require is. So, and I always say that those people that come in and give you the negative feedback, those bids that you fail to participate in or that you don't win, will ultimately tell you where you need to be and where you want to go, you know where you need to go. So for growth to happen, you must definitely look inward, identify the needs, and then be able to scale up in terms of skilling and training, in terms of partnering, but also in terms of identifying opportunities around you so that you're able to diversify beyond the small scope that you have started with and be able to offer um, greater, you know, services, yeah. Right. Guys, Martha are asked something about the cost. Yes. I think it, uh, the cost is really dependent on the um, certification that you're you looking want. for. Mm. Yeah, some people are looking for one or two or three, but there are lots of uh, ISO standards and certifications that can be given. So, and it is dependent on uh, where you're starting from. Uh, some are starting from scratch and they are really starting from the training. Mm. So it really depends on what where you, you are. Yeah, where you're at. Okay. And, so where can yeah. I go if I want ISO certification? There are so many companies. I think this information is also available online. Okay. Uh, but also as you go out to the oil and gas, you can also look out for those uh, people that are certifying companies in those particular sectors. Yes. Okay? And then uh, if it is engineering and construction, for example, there are people who are particular to satis uh, certifying in that particular, you know? Yes. All right. As we come to a close, there are some questions here. Tell us one from Ariho Kamara. Tell us one of the companies in your sector, either local or international, that you are benchmarking and what makes them enviable? What makes them enviable? Why do you want to follow them? Any company out there that you're looking at and say, I want to be like these guys? Uh, well, uh, of course, we are one of a kind. <laughs> and uh, our service is not normal. <laughs> our kind of service is not, uh, you know, something that you find uh, everywhere. But there are so many uh, international companies that we really do admire. And uh, they've really set up uh, huge um, assistance programs. And many of these, uh, you know, internationally, I don't know if they may know them, but some, for example, like AIMS, um, you know, there are those that we really admire in regard to the dispatch system, in regard to the ambulance setup, the personnel, and of course most of the companies, if you can see um, in Europe, if you've uh, looked at the 911 kind of structure, we want at some point to actually be able to be that 
911 here yes. you know so that we are able to provide that level of of service yeah awesome so many questions are coming at the end what unique benefit beneficial impact has the certification process had on your staff and what would you say now sets you apart from your sector competitors benefit of iso to your staff and what sets you apart answer those two questions and we'll close shortly so the benefit of uh, iso definitely is that now before you're fearing to come to the bidding table okay yes. If you have gone through ISO certification, you have the answers. there is no bidding process that you cannot beat. Yeah. You know, so it presents you with bigger opportunities. You're able to actually um, bid, find partners. Uh, you present with a certain level of quality, and therefore, you know, the benefits are really enormous in regard to identifying new opportunities. Yes. Yes. Awesome. And Ladies there was and the last question? Yeah, it, uh, it was about what would you say sets you apart from your competitors? Yes, I think what sets us apart as um, a Ugandan local company is the passion. We have a huge passion to actually excel and be different. Uh, we compete with ourselves internally. Mm. Every year we have you know, a need to figure out how best can we improve? How do we improve ourselves? How do we improve our personnel? How do we improve the company? What is the growth strategy? Um, our values and mission. So our passion for excellence, I, I guess, is what really sets us apart. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, let's celebrate Isabella for coming here to share her powerful story and experience in this sector. You can see we have a standing ovation. Thank you so much. And as a Ugandan company, it's very, it's a thing that we love to hear. So thank you for do, whatever you're doing. Thank you so to much. Dr. Yes. Tell him is setting us apart as a nation. Yeah. And both of you, of course. And thanks a lot uh, for sharing and coming here. And we'll invite you again to share. Yes. Those of you who are here, you can have an opportunity to meet mm. uh, Isabella outside. So friends, we've come to a close, but two things I want to remind you about. The first one is Harvest Multipurpose Cooperative. I know we didn't talk about it, but one of the things people in the oil and gas sector are suffering with is access to finances. But if you're part of HMC, HMC promised that they can give you all the money you need. That's a joke. But our multi-purpose cooperative uh, is inviting you to join them. We are now over a billion, uh, over, over a, a million dollars. Yeah. And I see the chairman is in the house. And at your locations, if you're a worship harvest member, each of your locations, there is someone to register you to join HMC because we are saving for the future. We are saving for businesses and we will not fail because of finances. So we encourage you to do that. And as we normally do, uh, if you're online or even in the room, uh, the reason we're here is to learn from the Bible how to do our businesses. And the people we interview have testimonies on the side, although some might, we might not share but that God has helped them through their businesses. So I want to encourage you, if you don't know God, if you don't have a personal relationship with him, we give you the opportunity right now to do that. And if you're out there and you want to do that, you're going to say this prayer with me so that you can have, start a relationship with God. Say this with me. Father, thank you for the opportunity today uh, that you've given me to surrender my life to you. I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and my Savior and that I give my life to you to do great things with it. I send it to you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray. Amen. If you say that prayer, there's a number on the screen. 0775-642-449. 0775-642-449. Call that number and there's a pastor at the end of that line and he will tell you the next steps after the prayer that you've said. But also if you're a business person and you want a prayer. Uh, please call the same number. Someone will be ready to pray for you, to encourage you. As you know, uh, business people are always slowly at the top, and there are always things you're struggling with, but we are here for you. So call that number, and someone will pray for you. So friends, thank you so much for joining us this morning, and see you next Sunday. We're going to have another powerful story uh, of someone doing business in the oil and gas sector. So thank you. Have a great Sunday. Stay right on the, on the same channel. We're going to start uh, our service at 9 a.m., and we're going to talk about healing. So if you're sick, if you have someone who is sick, let them tune in. You're going to have some interesting word and encouragement. And we know that people are going to get healed. So see you at 9 o'clock and have a great Sunday.